So for today, um, I'm also I also wanted to talk a little bit about some uh, bad news that that um, has happened lately, and uh, it's very very sad because I really 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 miss this this guy. Um, every day when I'm out in my garden, you know, you guys know Blue is always right there, and I always give him a treat, a snack because he's scratching. <laughs> <laughs> scratching on the fence um, and I always know that he's there and he's like a, he's kind of like my buddy my pal my my soulmate in the garden you know but um, the when I came back from vacation I think um, two days after I heard him he was kind of like having some congestion or something like that I'm not really sure I just feel like it's like my dog my, my only dog that's left behind he, she has a, a collapsed trachea but it's inherent to that breed though. It's um, Pomeranians, so when they breed them so small, um, they start developing certain, you know, um, illnesses that that's inherent to that to that breed. So um, I've already lost one, one of my dogs, Mango, who is, um, uh, who has that collapsed trachea and there's really nothing I can do, um, we can do for it. So, um, so the so after two weeks when I get when I got back after I heard him do that, I was wondering how come I don't hear him anymore. Like I'm waiting for I still have a bag of treats to give him um, that's outside. And um, then I saw I saw my neighbor and I asked my neighbor um, where's Blue, and she just you know made a sad face and it's like oh we had to have him we had to. That's it. Get That's him all I got. Put down because he has he was having like trouble um, with his lungs and stuff like that. So um, I was just like really devastated. I mean, it's my neighbor's dog. I barely see this guy. I mean, but he's like he's like he's been with us, guys. Remember, he's been with us all this time, and it's really sad. And they're not gonna get another dog, so there's not gonna be another blue. But blue cannot be replaced anyway. But really really sad to find out that he's gone and then after that when I go outside um, in the garden the in the backyard because that's where I see him all the time um, it's kind of sad that I don't hear him anymore that he's not bugging me about a treat and um, you guys are not gonna hear him anymore and just I'm just sad you know I mean I don't even think that my neighbor really knows how much he's been a part of my life and a part of our lives our lives in the video you know um we just hear him and now we're not going to hear him anymore so but there's an end to everything so and and everyone so really you know it's it's a loss it's a really really sad loss that we've lost blue but anyway so moving on along so the next um, the video that's coming up is about um, how uh, the summer has like changed. I changed my method for the summer because um, most of these plants are are dormant in the summertime. Because you can tell that when they're like this in the spring, and then all of a sudden you see them go like this, like they're protecting themselves from the heat and the sun, everything. Um, you know they kind of need that because it's like it, it it makes them stronger and also the cold weather makes them stronger that's why um i encourage you guys like if you have um if you have a plant that's sturdy you know just like like an echeveria agavoid or something like that like echeveria imbricata even when you have something like that i encourage you like if you buy two of them like put one so that it's just you know out in the open and it's it's uh, you know it's of course buried underground or planted under uh, in ground <laughs> i keep saying underground why anyway so you plant it in ground and just let it you know get get exposed to the elements and if it dies you know it's like it's it has to be something that that you don't really find special or maybe it's pretty but it's very prolific or something like that because i noticed that out there um in out there in the front like it's 
it's always sunny it's always hot it's always exposed like i can't even go out there without coming back inside because it's so hot but it's it just feels like like the elephant bush the uh, mother of a thousand or uh the the oh my god this is a crassula or even the echeverius i just feel like being out there and just exposing them and just forgetting about them not babying them sometimes it's good for them you know so um that's what i suggest uh and then if it dies it dies you know so something that you're not really you don't really care about or you do care about but you have at least you have another one um if there's two if you have two of them another one i i don't know because i just feel like it's like it's everything acclimates like we if i moved i moved from the philippines and it's really hot there um and so when the first few winters here but even now you know i'm still cold but i acclimated like um i can now go out there in 60 degree weather without having to put on a jacket you know because um kind of used to it so it's it's a living thing so you have to treat it like a living thing uh, but if we baby the the plants too much, maybe you know they'll be babies too. You know, oh, I can't stand it outside, it's so hot. My word, oh, give me some tea. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so that's what, so. So the next video right now is I'm gonna show you all the plants that that actually. Um, survived like they're they survived like they're they're trying they're just like oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna be strong i'm gonna power through this heat i'm gonna power through because obviously we've had rain lots of rain lots of rain and they just love the rain for some reason some of them not so much but most of them really love the rain and then you know i i also show you some the, some plants who get more water than the others um because of the sprinkler system you know i mean i can't really control that yeah so that's it guys so i hope that you stick around for that um piece of information the um i also have uh coming up i will be uh updating on what's going on with the babies but you'll see a little bit of it um on the next part so guys thank you so much for keeping uh staying in touch with me i really really appreciate everybody all the comments were so adorable so starting with this ionium i just noticed that the stems of it started to curl and i don't know why i think it might be because i'm holding back on the watering so it's drooping a little bit um you'll see also later on with the ionium garden same thing it drooped so that's one of the things i noticed and for this one i the fichenkoi i just replanted this so i don't know if it's still trying to acclimate to the ground or what but um i'm hoping that by the fall this coming fall and you know hopefully we get a lot of rain too that this is um, going to grow upwards and happier. So I mixed up a lot of um, different types of plants here just to see what's going on, but they really stopped their growth. Look at it. That's the multicolis. Um, that's kind of like a bushy type succulent, and so you know, hoping for the best with that one. Mother of a thousands there. Coming over here to the front, they're a little bit closed up. The um, Echeverius actually, because of the heat, has um, damaged some of the leaves, but that's okay because underneath it, you will see that there's a lot of um, pups just pushing out. So, you know, I've, I expected this to happen. I'm not really that concern but the one in the back that glauca and the glauca is just prolific it just like pushes 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 and, and it's so beautiful because it's just like the pale color see there you go there's look at the brand new echeverius pushing out there that's really really healthy 
so those are the ones that are upcoming and it's starting to you know get spread out a little bit and they're gonna be fine I think here is the afterglow which is beautiful um, last year was struggling again so I think this one is pretty much hardened um, so this year it just kept pushing out pops and um, did not stop growing because uh, it got used to the heat I guess so yeah this did not get babied I thought for sure this was gonna die <laughs> but you know thank thank you for the rains and um, how how much we had this year so that's this is the I forget what ink this is I know it's a cross a lot but again here's another one that's had like maybe four or five stalks last year but look how much it has now and it did not stop growing even though it's the summertime I'm just really very impressed with these plants um, the front is looking really nice um, it's starting to become less maintenance for sure um, except for you know lots of weeds that I have to do this is the ghost plant so it's more sort of a yellowy orange um, in the summer but during the winter fall and spring it's like I don't know <clears throat> like a cross between like a sage green and a um, baby blue kind of thing it's really nice oh my gosh these plants they're just everywhere and they just like just choke the life out of everything so here's the ripple jade this one I thought was going to die from all the rains that we got this year but it didn't and look how beautiful it is now it's actually overtaking the rock that's behind it that's not what I, how I planned it to be but obviously that's how it's happening <laughs> these aloes my husband planted these ones and they're just like everywhere I don't know if you guys want them <laughs> um, let me know because I have a lot of them and I can put them on Etsy for you if you want so here's another Calcoli maybe I don't know I'm not really sure but this is the Rosa um, and mm, it's struggling a little bit but usually actually they're jet it's the jet beads also on the left side and the, on the right is the rosa they're a little bit struggling and this plant right here i forget what the name of it is but um it just pushed out all these beautiful um maroon flowers that just awesome and this is the what is this fire campfire yeah it's the campfire and this also um, under the, the heat and the, the heat wave um, it's really red and yellow and orange <clears throat> but I think I have this planted somewhere where it does not get a lot of oh, look at all the mealybugs there yuck uh, oh I need to spray Rem I, rem rem I have to remind myself tonight to spray this um, because this one gets a lot of mealybugs for some reason I don't know why I just constant I'm constantly spraying the heck out of it um, you know and it'll be gone for about a week and then after a week here it comes again so which reminds me I have to do this every week now uh, because just in the summertime this is the mealybugs there's so there's so much this is also the um, Vera Higgins right here uh, very nice still stays red and purplish um, and then against this this bright green one it's just so beautiful that's why it looks so good when you're stepping you know back and kind of far away from I get a lot of compliments from the neighbors I'm just really just really happy that they're they're so pretty here they're ch they change colors 
course I have to do this when it's garbage day. So here on the side yard right here, I have these uh, sun sparkler. Oh, sun sparkler. That's not sun sparkler. Anywho, um, so the elephant bush is fine in the heat because it seems to be thriving. Look at that one over there. Thrive. Um, however, here's the the um, echeveria that, uh, that I I held back water to. Um, it does get the morning sun and probably afternoon as well. Now the ghost plant right here, grow, 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 but it's puckered up. Not puckered up, but like it's closed up, protecting itself. But here, this is another aloe. Kind of likes it, although it could do better in the sun. Again, here's an Ionium. These Ioniums close up because they are... Um, dormant in the summer but we'll wait till it starts getting really cool and that's gonna open up it's just going to especially in the spring this right here you guys need to help me with the name of this um plant right here it's huge i mean seriously look at my foot compared and I put worms in this pot. That's why it just keeps growing, growing, like in the middle. And then the old leaves are still intact. Keep, keep on doing your job there, guys. Okay, so let's see. So now here's a, here's the ranioni. It just keeps pushing out um, the flowers, the blooms. It likes where it's at because it's shady here oh come on trash guys and ionium right here is closing up during the summer but once it opens back up open for business it's going to be beautiful and yeah and it gets so big too i think i need to repot this guy right here and then this sedum right here that's pushing out beautiful white flowers during the summer but then when they die it's ugly so I have to pull them all out that's life guys alright so what's over there this one look at the flowers this aloe right here I think that needs to be oh, so many things to repot guys see once they start once they start um, losing space in their pots, it means you need to repot because it's probably pot bound. So this right here needs to be redone, but it's getting a lot of water. But obviously this Echeveria likes it. So maybe Echeverias need more water in the summer. See? I'm learning. I'm learning with you guys. And this little, um, my little garden over here. My dogs are buried here. So I've got the little dog, which I got for free because I was looking on on um, offer up, and they're giving away planters. I went and got the planters, and lo and behold, they were giving this one away. So what perfect place to put it, but. <laughs> in the garden of dogs my little dog pet cemetery right there so here also this one oh my gosh look at all these brown things this is easy you just take you just pull them off you know yeah there's some that's gonna go with it but who cares this is gonna grow like in the springtime in the in the fall you know, and it's beautiful. Like it gives out beautiful flowers, tiny ones. So I'm just, I'm just gonna pull these off, and then they look good again. See? Well, there's like weeds too. So, 
but you get my meaning, right? It's a lot of work. I don't want to bore you guys. But if you take out like all of these other oh, this stuff right here, then you get a beautiful garden again. I just need to work on the okay so this is get, this is getting a lot of water from the sprinklers so obviously that guy right there goodness what is that I know I I um I labeled it but I just can't remember I think it's a domingo maybe oh no 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 those these are um Fred Ives okay so the Fred Ives like the sun which is the morning sun and then they also must like medium amount of water because look at how pretty he is. Pretty he is. <laughs> and also this um, Polydonis right here likes it too. Likes the water because this one gets water like every other day. So I don't know. Maybe I should start watering them every other day now um but see the the paddle plant doesn't like too much water and too much sun so this needs to move so i don't know if i want to do that maybe it just needs to harden <laughs> i might move it i just have to find out where to move it okay so this guy right here forget the name again um also likes where it's at it likes the the water it likes the the heat um so yeah i just want to get all these dry stuff off of it because this is where mealybugs start, believe it or not. This is the Echeveria. I don't know. Do you guys care? I mean, starting not to care. Um, yeah, see, but this is, it's not really, does it get water? Yeah, it's pretty wet under there. So hopefully by the fall, this guy right here is going to grow again and um, strengthen its leaves. Let's go over here. This the Ionium, this the Ionium garden right here. Look at that. I, I, I don't know if it's getting way too much water. I think it is because it is in the line of the sprinkler system so I'm probably going to ask my husband to redirect that but in the winter in the, in the fall it's really pretty and then my agave right here likes it it's growing actually I'm glad I moved it there this is going to be this is a monocarpic plant which means that once it grows huge um, maybe five foot across and it flowers it'll die but then there's like lots of babies around it so um, that's what monocarpic is it's getting hot out here guys I'm gonna move to the back here are my newly repotted plants got to be under the shade because we don't want the Sun killing <laughs> this one's already um, sun damage right here. These are the ones that I got from the from the swap uh, The library swap that you guys are gonna see that soon And then I got these ones that I repotted from the uh, mother and these are the Echeverias and the um, Echeveria Eternity Yes, guys, the Echeveria Eternity and then these are all, um, oh gosh, I can't remember, but look at the, look at the, um, my, um, wayward children that's not so wayward. And the hot dog plant right here. And this I moved out of the side there because it's getting way too much sun 
and I don't know why it's also still struggling here. I don't know. I'm gonna figure something out. Uh, my Jennifer right there, it's also thriving where it's at. Where's the baby one? I had a baby one here somewhere. Uh, this Fred eyes right here, see? It's hiding. Okay, so now she can breathe. Anyway, this dyed, um, these are, this is the lime gold right here. It's not dyed, but it's dying because it's like, look at where the sun is right now. That's why. Um, and plus it's probably pot bound, which I'm going to check on that one. Then I have my Ioniums that are, these, these Ioniums like it in the shade. So obviously these guys, I don't know about this one. I think this is more pot bound, but that one's, those ones are not. So these need to be repotted or I'm just going to behead those and um, pot it again. White Sprite doing good. Um, let's see. All of this. This is the Fire and Ice, uh, I think. <laughs> um, and this is the Holy Gate. I have a lot of Holy Gates. I think that's the one I'm going to give away. Okay. Let's see, so pretty much the same, the same, the same. Oh, the babies. Oh, look at these guys. Look at, look at them. They're just thriving, especially that one. Which one is this one? I don't remember. Big leaves. Hmm, I don't remember. But I don't care. Just keep, just keep going, my loves. All right, so here I go. These are the ones that are under the shade the whole summer. They're um, closing up because most of these are closing up, but none of them are um, burning. The, the leaves are burnt. So um, those are also uh, held back water. These are all the most of these are the Koreans. Those two right there are the, the big ones that you saw in the back there. That's going to be like that. And I have three of them right now. Um, these are just like the, the sensitive leaf, leaves, you know, with the sensitive leaves. Uh, oh, look at this one. Oops. So these these over here I set aside because these are the ones that are definitely going to get um, repotted. This one is the same as the one in the front. They're all the same. These four. And look how fast it's already kicking butt, man. It's awesome. Um, this one, I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys can tell me. Uh, the, uh, gosh, what is this? Graptotheria superbum. Um, that's doing well in the shade. So, um, Lola is also doing great in the shade. Um, but it's a bright light. My sister just gave me this. This is going to be an awesome plant right here. And this is the string of the rain, the rain, um, raindrops. Uh, I'm going to hang that up there somewhere. Maybe in the, I don't know. I don't know, guys. And here's my workstation for now. And these are, you know, I'm going to clean these guys up like this. So what is going on here? I have no clue. But this plant right here, this um, Bella. Is it? Ooh, I I didn't know that was a Bella. Um, kind of mealy bug. Love it, love it. So let me tell you guys, these three plants at Traveria Blueprints. Okay, when the leaves are really dark, that is very attractive to um, mealy bugs. So that's what you gotta you gotta keep an eye on those types of plants because the mealy bugs love them. And what else? So the string of pearls are doing great because it's under the shade. Um, let me just go and show you like the ones that are that are being beat down by the sun. So Calandria loves it. This sedum, not so much. 
um, the this one right here. What is this one? The oh gosh, I forget the name again. Um, but this one is really thriving. The big the mama plant is kind of this is these came out of the mama plant. This is the mama plant. It was big before, but because these guys are sucking up all the energy, um, it is now taking over. Chroma. This is the chroma. I'm not sure. That likes it. The Hawaii is struggling a little bit, but guys, look, it's pushing out a bunch of babies. So I'm guessing that it likes the heat and the sun. Uh, and from now on, because it's starting to get cooler, I'm going to water them a little bit more than I did in the summer. Uh, maybe once a week. Because I, I used to do it like once every 12 days or once every um, 10 days. Apparently, my sed sedivaria or um, semper vivums don't really like the heat. Ooh, I just threw away one. To see this, so every time I I get um, semper vivum semper vivum baby in my hand that I accidentally pulled out, I put I put them here to give them a chance right here. So look at all those. So back here, Rosa again likes it. Rosa likes it. Uh, let's see what's thriving. The Fred Eyes is doing great. This is this Semper Vivum right here. I don't know why. These, they don't, these guys are, this one is like thriving. Is there something in this pot that's making it thrive? Maybe, maybe there's, maybe there's a, a worm in there. I don't know. Okay, so apparently Shrek doesn't like it too much in the heat. Pagoda uh, baby's um, necklace or whatever that is doesn't really like it. This guy, I don't remember the name, but yeah, it's doing fine. But let's see what's struggling. Okay, here, Black Prince, right here, struggling. Why? Because of the dark leaves. The dark leaves cannot compete with the heat of the sun and the, the bright light. So look at my Semper Vibe. I know they look like they're dead, but they're going to come back. And if they don't, oh well. But look at the California sunset. Love the heat. Love it. The heat and the, and the bright sun. And so is that um, rare sedum that I have on the back there. Let's see what else. Do -do 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 -do. Main thing, not liking very much. I think there's something wrong with that. I think there's something wrong with that for some reason. <clears throat> I have to find a good place for it. It's like a, a soft bodied cacti, um, just like the one that I showed you earlier. Um, Pulidone or the pulvanata likes it in the heat. I guess the ones with, yeah, the, the ones with the fuzzies might be a little bit more protected from the heat and the sun. Okay, we're coming to the, almost the end. Here's the mini garden, the mini succulent garden. And a little struggling, but, excuse me, I think it's going to come back if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And look at my little Mexican snowball right there. Or the, um, yeah. No, mini bell. My mini bell. That I'm sad about if it doesn't come back. Um, but I can always go to San Francisco and find it. I think depends on if the seller is coming back to the Cacti and Succulent Society sale okay look at this so this one is under the shade this is the dark moon just like the dark print or the black prints they like the shade 
so I don't know uh, probably dig up those ones out there and put it under the shade so it can have a fighting chance and that's it guys I think I love you guys have a nice day and don't forget XOXO bye